welcome you to this Sure Fire Life Conference. The Sure Fire Life Conference is a platform that God has given us to make clear and simple the pathway to eternal life. And that's what we have been doing. And that's what we'll continue to do today. Today, our topic is eternal life. We have been uh, speaking on the topic, who is a Christian? Who is a Christian? And as God has helped us, that message has been put in a book. I believe many of us have got the copy. If you haven't got, gotten the copy, um, indicate the facilitator will make a copy of this book available to you the book is available online yeah, electronic copy is available you don't have to pay a cover for it you don't have to pay any money it's all free uh, because that's the mandate the almighty god gave us to put the message of eternal life the pathway to eternal life in the simplest way possible and make it free and available to every humankind. That's what we are here to do. And therefore, all of us on this platform have two roles to play. Role number one is for you to learn the message of eternal life and gain eternal life for yourself. And number two is to become the ambassador of Jesus Christ to spread this message to your family, to your friends, to your loved ones, and everywhere. Because this is the mandate of the Almighty God to make the pathway to eternal life clear. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, once again, thank you for joining this session. We want to take our opening prayer now as we enter into the teaching on the topic eternal life. Let us pray. In Jesus' mighty name, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us this morning to teach us your word, to teach us your ways. We surrender all to you. And we ask, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, you will give us wisdom. You will give us understanding. Open our inner ears to hear. Open our eyes to behold the wondrous things out of your law. Open our minds to understand, to discern, to perceive, to receive your word this morning. All this we have asked through our Lord and Savior, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. For those who may be joining us for the first time, um, the book I showed you, Who is a Christian? Uh, we started the teaching in that book or from that book. And there we described a very simple model that makes everybody understand how to become a Christian, uh, which we call B-R-R-B-L. That's the acronym, B-R-R-B-L. Believe, repent, receive, become, and live. I want to take the study today again from that angle. So in the book, I will read from page nine, in that book, from page nine, one of the lines says this, in summary, you believe, repent, receive, become, and live, B-R-R-B-L. Believe God and his son, Jesus Christ. Repent of sin, receive the Holy Spirit, and become a son or daughter of God. Then live by faith and love in accordance and obedience to the word of God. Till you translate this word and continue to enjoy eternal life, which God has provided for you as his son and daughter. 
So it is this side of eternal life that we want to deal with. We have dealt with the acronym BRRBL. Believe, repent, receive, become, and live by faith and love, which is the life God has called us to live. So to look into this topic today, eternal life, it is a topic that uh, I know is of interest. And there have been lots of discussions and views and thoughts around that. I believe the Almighty God will help us to understand God's view as recorded in the Bible this morning, in the name of Jesus. So let's take our texts that we are going to uh, discuss, use in discussing this topic. Our texts, we're going to take two uh, scriptural passages. The first one is John 3, verses 15 and 16. John 3, verses 15 and 16. I know if I ask us all to recite, we will recite those uh, scriptures very uh, well. And then our second text will be 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. So John 3, 15 to 16, let's read it together that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a well-known scripture where Jesus Uh, John was testifying, rather, about Jesus here, and he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, but have everlasting life. The second scripture, 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. The Bible says, and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. Please note that he who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. These things have been written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Glory be to God. Oh, what a word. Oh, what a word. He who has the Son of God has life. And when we started this uh, teaching, who is a Christian, we made clear that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And there is no argument about that. So if you have the Son of God, you have life. Let me start this teaching this way. The greatest need of man is eternal life. The greatest need of mankind is eternal life. Whether you accept it or not, whether you know it or not, the greatest need of mankind is eternal life. In that scripture, the Bible makes us to understand, uh, particularly in the first John chapter 5, uh, from verse 11 to 13 that we read, the Bible makes us to understand that God has given us eternal life. And this is the key point we want to make clear today. God has given us eternal life. Note, the scripture did not say God will give us eternal life. 
The scripture did not say that when the time comes, God will bring us into eternal life. No, 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 no. The scripture makes it clear. He said, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. It is Jesus Christ, his son. And he made it clear, he that has the son has life. Oh, brothers and sisters, if you have the Son of God, you have already received eternal life. The world is still waiting and looking for when eternal life will come. So this is the message that God wants us to, to know and to share with the world, that eternal life has already come. Eternal life has been made available to all mankind. The issue is, do you accept, do you receive this eternal life? Jesus Christ said in John chapter 10, verse 27, John 10, 27, he says, this is eternal life, that you may believe in God and in Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. And in John chapter 10, verse 10, John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus Christ said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. I know many people begin to use this abundant life in uh, another way, only focusing on the material side. Yes, eternal life can produce material blessing. However, it is much more than that. So eternal life is not something to come. Eternal life is what you receive while you are here in this world. So this is point number one that we want to make clear, that eternal life is not something yet to come. Eternal life is what you receive while you are here in this world, because God has already given eternal life. When we talk about eternal life, then we must also remember the opposite side, which is eternal damnation. Eternal damnation. What does that mean? It means that anyone that is not in Christ has by himself or herself condemned himself. Anyone that is not in Jesus Christ has by himself or herself condemned himself. That is what eternal damnation means. At this point, let me make the point that I know many people spend their time uh, and, and worry about, which is when we die, where do we go? What happens to us? Uh, by God's grace, as we go in a series of these studies, we will touch a bit on that. But I want to tell you that the more critical and more important thing is what you do while you are here in this, on this planet Earth, in this part of life. Have you received eternal life, which is in Christ Jesus? Or have you on your own rejected eternal life and thereby condemned yourself? If you do either of the two, then you know the answer to the question, where do we go when we leave this world? The other point I want to bring out of this study is a key message around the end. I want to remind us that we live, and you can write this one down, because it will help change your perspective and boost your activities and your actions in this life. We live with the end every day. We live with the end every day. You know, many people often think the end again uh, is going to come sometime. Young people will say, when I have, when I am old, I will serve God. Um, young women, young men, 
I will say, ah, this is the time for me to enjoy my life. Oh, I wish you understand what the real enjoyment is. That enjoyment is in Jesus Christ. So we live with the end every day. The day it happens and the breath of life is gone out of us, that ends it here in this part of, the, of life. I will repeat that again. We live with the end every day. The day it happens and the breath ceases, our breath goes out of us. It all ends here and there in this part of life. To draw examples to this, let's thank our God who has kept us alive to see today. But think about it. Take any one of us who is connected online here, take your age group. From the day you were born, from the day I was born, from the day we were born, there were many people born that same day who died that day. And their end ended that day. Oh, we made it one. Many people who didn't make that it one, they ended within that age one. You can jump to age 12. Many people within that time. Oh, 30. Many people. For some of us who are above 50, many people. So, you must grasp the eternity concept that we live with the end every day. The day our breath ceases in this part of life that is the end in this life. The question then is, have you received eternal life while you are here? In the course of this study, we will also touch on judgment, which is very important the assessment of how we live our lives while on this part of life. Having set that tone, I want to draw our attention to a statement that Jesus Christ made in Luke chapter 13, verse one. I will just read it from my Bible, Luke chapter 13, verse one. That they were present at the season, at that season, some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Hear the story again. That they were present at that season, some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. All those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men? who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So Jesus, he was here told about the wickedness of Pilate, how Pilate was mingling the blood of Galileans in his sacrifice. And they thought Jesus was going to be moved by this so much but jesus said to them you better watch you better watch because those people don't think that they are the worst sinners he in fact had to remind them about another group of people the 18 on whom the tower fell on so when you take a look 
you see that many people have left this world. But it looks like man is the least learner of all of God's creation. In fact, this is my own assertion that man is the least learner of all of God's creation. Because we live with this evidence every day, and yet we continue to live as though this world is permanent. This part of life is not permanent. And that is why the scripture teaches us that there is eternal life and there is also eternal damnation. One is by receiving Jesus. The other is by rejecting Jesus. This is basically what it is. I thought to keep it this simple so it is clear. I know what will excite people is to get into those arguments of where we go when you live here. But I want you to stay with me and understand what God is actually doing. God is already giving you a guarantee of where you will go when you live here, why you are here. So that is the message of eternal life. So eternal life, in summary, is to live the life that God has given you to live, the life of God, because it's only God that is eternal. And so it is by the Spirit of God through Jesus Christ. As 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 makes it very clear, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. This life is in his son. He that has the son has life. He that does not have the son of God does not have life. That is it. Eternal life. Now, we need to understand how God operates. So we'll look at a number of scriptures to support this point that God has given us eternal life while we are here. And then we will look at what we do with this eternal life. Because many Christians who don't understand this have lived their life short of expectation. As I was mentioning, I say when young people say, Oh, I want to enjoy my life first before I give my life to Jesus. It's because they don't understand what real enjoyment is. The real enjoyment, the real thing is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord forever. Like Jesus declared there, he said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Oh, there is abundant life in Jesus Christ. Ah, I'm almost like jumping the gun, but let me hold myself because as we continue in this series, please, I, invite, I encourage you stay through this month. You will hear some things that will change your life. I, I believe by the Spirit of God, that is a promise. That is a promise. Let's look at a few things. Um, so you need to understand how God operates. You need to understand how God operates. I just want to leave these three key things with you to bring the message home. You need to understand how God operates. God at creation, in Genesis, you can read it. Once, whatever God conceived, whatever God conceives, he declares it. And when he declares it, his spirit takes over. The spirit of God takes over and brings to manifestation what 
God has declared. Hear me again. You need to understand how God operates. And I took us back to Genesis, and you can go and study it again. That when whatever God conceives, he declares it. And the Spirit of God takes over and brings to pass what God has said. You would see this in how God has guaranteed us eternal life through Jesus Christ, all through the scripture. So God declares what is going to be. That is how God operates. He declares what is going to be, and then he writes it down, and his spirit takes over and brings it to fulfillment. And you will see this all through the scripture. Note this pattern because you as a believer, you as a recipient of eternal life, you must know how to utilize what you have received. I want us to look at the first scripture quickly, just to buttress some of this point. Let's look at Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Romans chapter 4, verse 17, which supports how God operates by declaration. So God operates by declaring. He speaks out. He declares what he is going to do. He writes it down for the records before him. And his spirit goes to work to bring that to pass. Of course, you know this scripture very well, as it is written. And that's why we always say, as it is written, because the word of God is written down, especially for mankind. But also you will know that there, is, there are records in heaven. So as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So God calls, God declares, when this is how God operates. Whatever God conceives, he declares it, he writes it down, and his spirit takes it over to fulfill it. Let's look at the second scripture. The second scripture in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. It says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So God declares it. It is written down and the spirit of God takes over and it is fulfilled. The counsel of God will come to pass. So let's go to the second part, which is God writing it down. Just a few examples for us. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. God writes it down. And then I will tie all this together for us to understand where this relates to eternal life and how we ourselves operate that life. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. In the Lamb's book of life. Please take note of that. I am coming back. That's why I told us, get the principle. Whatever God conceives, he declares it. It is written and the Spirit of God brings it to pass. 
the Lamb's book of life. Next, Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. You will see also two books being mentioned here. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. <laughs> and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Please keep that scripture on. Let's just take two parts here. So you can see there is a book that is called the book of life. The Lamb's book of life. The Lamb is Jesus Christ. That is why it is only in Jesus Christ that you have one has eternal life. So there is a book of life. And there are books. As you can see here in the opening statement, he said, and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. Then there is another book that is called the book of life. And if you jump then to the last part, he said, and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Not according to the book of life, which is one book, but the books. As I said, I know many people are interested in this aspect. We will come to it. But just have the principle here that God writes down what he conceives. There is record and there are records. And once it is written, the Spirit of God takes over and it is guaranteed to come to pass. So relating to eternal life, God says, I have given my son Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in him, whoever receives him, receives eternal life. His name is written in the book of life. So you already receive eternal life. Why here? You receive your name being written in the book of life. Because once you leave this world, as the Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to die. And after that judgment, there is no more place of repentance. There is no more place to change. You determine your end, your end, eternal destination while here in this world. Let's look at the last part. The spirit takes over to make sure, to bring to fulfillment what God has conceived and declared and written down. Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In him, you also trusted. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory? Please keep that scripture on and let the people of God just peruse the key words here. Discern the operation of God. As I have just said it, you see, this platform is to make the mystery of, of eternal life simple, clear, and available to everyone. You receive eternal life while here on earth by believing in Jesus Christ. 
And of course, there is the place of sustaining that. Because I know somebody will ask me, he said, ah, does it mean once somebody receive Jesus Christ, that person cannot fall out of grace? Of course, we addressed that that last time. I'm still going to touch on it again. So we know. If I let me link it up here so we can connect at once. There is a place of enduring till the end after you have received. And that's why we are teaching that model, model BRRBL. BRRBL. Believe, repent, receive, leave. You have to live the life of faith and love in Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit till you leave this world. Live by the Spirit of God. Live by the power of God. Do the things God has sent you to this world to do. The things God has created you to do. That is life. That is what Jesus meant when he said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. It is living this abundant life, living by faith and love, knowing that you have a guarantee beyond this world to continue to live in the presence of God. Question comes about the resurrection of the dead. Yes, like I said, we will deal with all that. So I am not talking about timelines here. After you die, you go to grave, you do this, and then the resurrection, you will come back to life. After all, you saw in the revelation portion that I read there, how the death will come back. So we are, we are going to deal with those, but understand it simply that while you are here in this world, you receive eternal life according to God's declaration. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit, which is the guarantee. And when you leave this world, it stands as God has said it. So the resurrection, as you saw there, there is a book of life. Your name will be in the book of life. And that is a guarantee of eternal life. Praise the name of the Lord forever. I'll just take one more scripture. I think we'll just leave it and I'll make a few points and summarize. So Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. Let's look at it. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. For by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So as we saw in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14, we believe in Jesus Christ and we have been sealed with the Holy Ghost. It is that spirit of God in us. The spirit of life that gives us life. The life of God. Let me remind us what we said in this um, other part of the teaching. When Jesus shall come, the only identity of those who will go with him, those who will be resurrected into his presence, assuming you have, we have left this world at that time, will be those who have the seal of the Holy Spirit. That's the only identity. That's why I spend time teaching whoever I can, the whole world, on what it means to be a Christian. A Christian is not a religious bigot. A Christian is a man, a woman who has been born of the Spirit of God through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. If you have 2 Corinthians 1.22, you can put it on while I summarize. 
Okay, who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee, as a guarantee. This is the guarantee. You only receive this guarantee through Jesus Christ. There is no other guarantee and there is no other identity. In fact, in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, if you read it there, you will see, he says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body by his Holy Spirit that dwells in you. It is the Holy Spirit that will quicken us. We will come to all that, even at the resurrection. Let me summarize that eternal life is the life of God. God is the one who is eternal. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, and yet he himself has no beginning, has no end. He is the self-existent God. So when we are talking about eternal life, we are talking about receiving the life of God that is forever. At the same time, we make the point that it is only through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that we have access to this life of God. And Jesus Christ declared it in two scriptures clearly and even more. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And in another scripture, John 10, 10, that I quoted, he declared, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Point two, we've given a model of how God operates to confirm that this eternal life God has given us has been guaranteed by God, that God declares what he conceives and he writes it down and his spirit seals it up. His spirit seals it up. And so while we are here on earth, when you receive Jesus Christ, your name is written in the book of life. And the Spirit of God seals that up. And that remains as God has said it. So at the resurrection, as we saw it, or if you are alive when Jesus comes, you will be, we will be one of those, among those who will be transformed, among those who will be resurrected, to live with him forever. That's the summary. Now, why we are here in this part of life, this life we have received, this life of God is so big, so large, so great. We have to utilize it. So that brings in the place of enduring till the end. Enduring till the end. I will leave that here. I know some people really want to hear that scripture. Okay, let's look at just one reference of it. Matthew 10, 22. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, so that uh, it, it will be clear. The life you have received, you have to endure. Matthew 10, 22 is the scripture that's talked. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. But he who endures to the end will be saved. You see this same scripture in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. And you also see it in Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. So the life we have received, we are to live. That eternal life, living by faith and love knowing how God operates, living in that same principle, what God conceives, he declares it and it is written down and the spirit of God takes it over 
and it is guaranteed. It is fulfilled. It cannot fail. It is sure proof. So the eternal life you have received, the seal of God that is on you, on me, on the children of God, all those who have come to, to God through Jesus Christ is guaranteed. God bless you. Let's pray to wrap up. As you have heard, it is only through Jesus Christ we receive eternal life. There is no other way. And eternal life lives forever. Eternal life lives forever. Of course, that's why it's called eternal life. It's the life of God. And in this life, that eternal life we have received is to manifest. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for teaching us your operation today, the operation of life. You have made us by your spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You have given us the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit produce the mind of Christ in us. We have the mind of Christ. Father God, I pray for all your children who have heard this word today that the mind of Christ come alive in them by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Perhaps there is anyone that has joined, that has listened to this word, that has not come into Christ. We ask by the power of your Holy Spirit, Almighty God, that you will draw such a brother, such a sister, such one unto yourself into Christ. And as he or she repents and yields himself or herself to you, Almighty God, we ask, Lord, pour your spirit upon that person now. We ask, Lord, that the blood of Jesus cleanses every sin, every iniquity, transgression, errors, mistakes, every form of offense in the name of Jesus. And now I ask, Heavenly Father, that by your spirit, by your grace, oh God, let all these your children who have heard your word today go forth and enlarge by the abundant life that Jesus Christ has given. The abundant life that you have given to them through Jesus Christ. Your Son, our Lord and our Savior. I pray specifically, Lord God Almighty, that as we enter a new week, your spirit grace, your spirit power will be so mighty upon your children that they will indeed know that you are with them. They will see the evidence of your mighty working power by your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And so I pray specifically, O oh God, for whoever is carrying a burden, carrying a concern, Lord, that that burden be lifted now. Receive a breakthrough in that area of challenge. I declare the sick healed now by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Almighty God, for giving us eternal life. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. And in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much for joining and have a blessed day.